Hey guys, what's up? It's Sam from Southern Maryland CrossFit, and this is vlog number two of the fitness pulpit. Paul musings about fitness, philosophy, and pop culture. So a quick recap, last week, uh, last time we talked about one giving 1% 1 of your time to exercise, and that would be equating to 1% of your paycheck that you're putting away to invest in your financial health. And that 1% of your time to exercise equated to about one hour and 40 minutes a week or $25 a month of your paycheck, right? So those are the same. I wanna start off this week by giving you a quote from Sir Edmund Hillary, who was the first person to ever summit Mount Everest. And he said, the biggest mountains are always climbed the same way every time, one step at a time. And he climbed Mount Everest, he summited Mount Everest in 1953. So we're gonna talk about some baby steps this week that you guys can do to improve your life. So if it's good enough for Edmund Hillary to take baby steps to climb mountains one at a time, and he was the greatest mountaineer essentially of all time, it's probably good enough for you. So next we're gonna move on to a famous financial guru. We're gonna talk about Dave Ramsey, who's probably most famous for the Total Money Makeover a proven plan for financial fitness, and he takes regular human beings out of financial debt. There are no tricks, there's no gimmicks, um, and he does it with essentially hard work, and if you do any Dave Ramsey podcasts or listen to anything about him, you know he's probably famous for saying rice and beans and beans and rice, basically living a very plain life currently to delay gratification so you can end up where you want to be in the long run. And his baby steps, we're gonna start with his baby step number one that he has for everyone, and that's just saving $1,000 for a starter emergency fund. Now, whether you do that by saving $5 a month, whether you do it by saving $50 a month, whether you do it by saving $500 a month, that's the baby step number one. Save $1,000 with whatever extra money that you have at the end of the month, put that away. Baby step number one for fitness that we're gonna give you is to simply eat three meals per day. That's it. Most adults go through, at least most adults around here in the DMV, go through eating about two meals per day. Most people are gonna skip breakfast or they're just gonna have coffee, which is, coffee is in fact not a meal. Um, then when they get to lunch, they're probably gonna have two terrible choices to make because they didn't do any meal prepping. They're gonna have, whether it's fast food or ordering pizza or ordering Chinese food from the office, they're gonna do that. And the other terrible choice is basically gonna be kind of that sad Wawa salad, right? It's just some iceberg lettuce, a baby cherry tomato, maybe a baby carrot, uh, a cucumber slice, a few cubes of ham, and of course, ranch dressing. Then when they get their last meal for dinner, it is normally not home cooked, it is gonna be some sort of frozen item, probably some sort of frozen lean cuisine, uh, pasta style dish with low protein, low fat and high carbohydrate. And then they're gonna finish off, of course, like we spoke about last time, with a nightcap drink. So baby step number one is to stop eating two terrible meals and a liquid bookended on each side, coffee and booze, and eat three real meals, real meals, a real breakfast, a real lunch, a real dinner. That's baby step number one that we have for you today. Dave Ramsey's baby step number two is to pay off all debt other than your mortgage. And he does this by, with a snowball effect, lining up all of your bills from the smallest bill to the largest bill in total lump sum that you owe. And normally that's gonna be something like a credit card, maybe a personal loan, car loan, student loan, and you're just gonna work on chipping those away after you've completed your baby step number one. Fitness baby step number two is gonna be very similar. We're gonna to try to remove all obstacles in the way of your health and fitness goals. Wow, that sounds daunting, right? But we're gonna look at overcoming those obstacles. So the first obstacle that people are gonna say is time. I'm just too busy, there's not enough hours in the day, I can't do that. 
Well, we already talked about last, last time that 1% of your weekly time is only one hour and 40 minutes, okay? So we're gonna assume that you kind of have already built that in and you're gonna do that. So 2% of your time would be three hours and 20 minutes. Well, recently, right, Endgame, Avengers Endgame, just came out on Blu-ray, digital, all that stuff. It's about three hours and 20 minutes. So if you have enough time to watch Endgame, you can have enough time to exercise. 2% of your time. The next thing when people say, I'm too busy, I just don't have the time, is looking at how much time you spend on social media, right? Even though I know you're probably watching this on some sort of social media, I do. The irony is not lost on me. But a way you can check out how much time you're spending actually on social media, if you have an iPhone, go to settings, screen time, and see how much time you spent social networking per day. So you could be taking that time and using it to exercise, right? Especially if you start to stretch into, it's more than an hour, it's more than two hours, it's more than three hours, it's more than four hours. If it's five hours, you have the time, trust me. The next obstacle people always talk about in coming to fitness is money. And it could be true, right? Maybe you really don't have the means to pay for a gym membership or training or whether that's you know CrossFitter or a commercial gym or whatever you'd like to do. Maybe you don't have the money, but maybe you do, but you're just managing it poorly as far as priorities are concerned. So the one thing that I would tackle is your weekly date night with your significant other, boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, wife, boo thing, just a friend, whatever. If you do a date night, you're gonna spend 10 to $15 on an appetizer. If you're gonna get two entrees, that's about 40 bucks depending on where you're going. And if you each have two drinks, you're gonna spend anywhere between 20 and $50 depending on what you like to drink. So you could come out with a $70 bill before tip, which is $84, right, 20%, or a $105 bill, 20% on top of that, right, 125 bucks. If you're spending that weekly, right, that's a significant amount of money that you could be putting towards fitness. And I would tell you that if you're doing a date night to kind of re-spark or continue to spark romantically with you and your partner, that looking better naked is going to be a better route than an hour in a restaurant, right? And plus, if you start working out and exercising, right, you're going to have more energy. And if you look better naked and you have more energy, you're probably going to have more sex. And that's what you're trying to do anyway to create a spark. So working out is probably going to be better than your date night. Now, the last thing we're going to talk about that's going to stand in people's way is guidance. Okay. I want you to consider the source on your guidance. We've heard lots of just ridiculous things over the years that don't make sense, right? Eating too much fruit makes you fat. Who are these people that are eating too much fruit that that's what made them fat? I don't believe that. Um, I'm, I'm pretty sure it was other poor choices than eating too much fruit. So consider your sources. That's just a small example of something that we hear a lot of times like, oh, I don't eat any fruit because I don't want to gain weight. Hmm. Okay. So if you don't take retirement advice from homeless people, I don't think you should really take fitness advice from people who either don't look the way that you want to look or haven't helped other people look the way that you want to look. So just stop, consider your source. Um, guidance really should be giving you a safer, quicker, and more direct route to your goals. Um, we tell people a lot of times that if fitness is a roadmap, right? If right now I'm in Waldorf and I want to get to Florida, I should probably just go on 95 would be the quickest way to get there, right? Now I could go all the way up, I could go to New York and I could make my way across the Midwest, all the way up to the Northwest, all the way down the West Coast, through the Southwest, come back down through the heartland again, and maybe eventually end up in Florida if I just steered south enough, but probably just a more direct route. So that's what guidance should be giving you. Um, 
the last thing that guidance should be giving you is moving you once you've eliminated your time, right? That excuse is gone. Money, that excuse is gone. You should be moving from actually exercising and just hoping to get sweaty and moving on to actual training with a plan uh, that's set up that is either tailored to you or tailored to most people with things that work. So hopefully you can work on these baby steps this week and talk to you guys soon. Later.